don't have our note. Okay. Um, good morning. It is February 1st, 2023. And because this is the first meeting of GOL after appointment of people to committees, um, we do use this as an opportunity to do reorganization. Let me also mention that because state law allows this meeting is ha being held virtually, but there is an opportunity for public comment um, using uh, Zoom and or phone, and the video will be available over time uh, on the town website. Uh, the first thing we have to do today is um, elect uh, the chair and the vice chair. And that's one of the jobs that I need to do as president, which is why I'm chairing at this point. Uh, so the floor is open for nominations and volunteers for the position of chair. Mandy Jo. Um, I, I nominate Jennifer Top. She's talked about um, giving people opportunities to lead, and I think she'd be a great leader, and this would be a great committee in order to foster that um, leadership development in council. So I nominate Jennifer. Okay. Are there any other nominations at this time? Jennifer, do you accept the nomination? I don't actually, but thank you. Yeah, Lynn and I have spoken about this, um, and I, uh, this is, uh, I, I um, feel I don't have the bandwidth to chair this committee now, so I appreciate the nomination, but um, yeah, we had a conversation okay. about this, so I would, um, I guess. Okay, Mandy Jo or Pat, you. you had your hand up. Go ahead, Mandy. Um, then I'll nominate Pat DeAngelis for chair. Um. <laughs> and I will second it. <laughs> Actually, you don't I even need a second. That would also do a fantastic job. Oh, you're right. Job. You don't need a second. That's right. But it's okay. We appreciate the seconds. <laughs> um, Pat, do you accept the nomination? Yes, I do. Okay. Are there any other nominations for chair of GOL? Okay. Seeing none, then I actually am going to do two things at once. And one is make sure that you can hear and be heard. And also, because I forgot to do that, and we should do that for all virtual meetings. And the other one is to make sure uh, and to give you an opportunity to vote. I will take this in alphabetical order. Pat DeAngelis? Aye. Um, Lynn Griesmer is an aye. Mandy Jo Haneke? Aye. Michelle Miller? Aye. Jennifer Tom? Aye. That's unanimous. So Pat, congratulations. I'll go ahead and um, open the floor for nominations for vice chair. You can either volunteer or you can. Um, I'm, I'm going to nominate, and I heard what you said about bandwidth, Jennifer, um, but I would love to know that you were vice chair. I'm in a transition period physically, um, Today's real, this morning's really hard. Um, so I'd love to know uh, that I could collaborate with you as needed. So I, I, you know, I hope you'll accept it. I will, thank you. Okay, great. Is, are there any other nominations or volunteers? Okay, then we're going to do the same routine. Uh, Pat DeAngelis? Aye. Uh, Lynn Griesmer is an aye. Mandy Jo Haneke? Aye. Michelle Miller? Aye. Jennifer Taub? Aye. Great. Uh, Pat, given, thank you. Uh, we now have chair and vice chair. And I will be glad to turn the meeting over to you, Pat, but I want to check to see whether you're not, you feel you can honestly do this today, given your Today is health. really difficult. Um, okay. So if, if someone else, if you could run the meeting, Lynn. I'm more than willing to run the meeting unless Jennifer, you would be able to. Um, I mean, we'll so help how, you. I guess I we'll could, help I wasn't right. <laughs> we'll yeah, help you through, a, how, how's yeah, that? Uh, in fact, let me pull up the agenda. Let's see the agenda. Um, and we'll look, look at the agenda and talk about the items and we'll all work with you. How's that? Okay, I know Thank that Michelle you. has already said she has a hard stop at 930 and I have a hard stop at 10 minutes of 11. 
So let me find the agenda. I did queue it all up earlier. Um, I have it here. Uh, basically, after the election, we have the action items. Right. The water and sewer bylaws, discussions and votes. We're, but we're holding off looking at Section 7. Right. And then there's general public comment. And we have our usual thundering herd of people. Uh, and <laughs> then we have minutes. Um, and I'd like to, uh, I'd like to bring up uh, switching meeting time a little bit by half an hour, not, but that's unimportant. So that's basically the agenda. And to look at our calendar. Right. And I, yeah. Right. I did. Um, go ahead. Well, I, I had on here when I was trying to work on it yesterday, a moment of silence for Ty, Ty uh, Nichols. If we could have 30 seconds of silence. I'd appreciate that very much. Let's make it a full minute. Okay. Okay. Thanks, Pat, for suggesting that. Um, Athena, Anna is in the audience. Would you bring her in? And let me just note that does not constitute a quorum. Uh, and she is here for the purposes of working with Amy uh, to talk about the water and sewer bylaws. Um, so. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, Anna. So, Lynn, I'm okay. letting you take over. Yeah. Yeah. I feel better, Pat. I will. I'm, I'm going to stay sit. I just can't. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. I know I have it. Um, just give me a second. I thought I had it all queued up, and I obviously didn't. Um, I guess I'm more bossy than I thought. Maybe we could have uh, Amy and Anna fill us in on TSO and um, what what's happening with Section F and the two bylaws. Do you want me to go, Anna, or do you want to take it? Um, you can go ahead. Feel free. Okay. Um, Unless you yeah. want me to, I'm happy. It's all good. Fill in okay. the blanks, I guess. Um, so. Yeah, I guess at least today we're going to look at the the bylaws to try and get them off, mm -hmm. understanding that we still have the sewer. Hold hold on one second. Michelle, you have your hand up. I do. Um, I'm just wondering if it would be at all possible that we deal with the timing and calendar issues since I have to leave at 930. Mm -hmm. I just want to ensure that I'm able to make the meetings and um, going forward. Um, Good suggestion. Would that be okay? okay? All right. Yeah. Great. Thank you. So two things. First of all, in your packet is a calendar, a proposed calendar. Uh, I believe that uh, it has us meeting every other week. Is that correct, Athena? Yep. Okay. And um, is there any question about the calendar and can we have a motion to adopt it, knowing that things can change? I move that we... The meeting time is part of the calendar, so you might want to include that in your discussion here. Okay. Uh, Pat, you've asked if we could meet at 930. Right. And if we can't, nine, uh, it's it's just tight for me for on a, on a in terms of my body, not anything to do with surgery. Uh, okay. But I can certainly still meet at nine. So I don't know. I mean, for me personally, 930 is fine. Mandy Joe. Fine. Uh, Michelle, Mandy Jo, either of you have want to weigh in? I have no problem with 930. Um, that works fine for me. I 
I was wondering whether we needed to meet every other week or if anybody had thought about maybe a, a lesser meeting schedule, but that that's just out for discussion if anyone has any, any thoughts. Let's let me come to that in just a moment. Mandy Joe, any problem with 930? 930 is fine. It and 930 works for me. So uh and what I would suggest, uh, Michelle, is that we schedule the meetings and then if we don't need them, we cancel them. But okay. keep in mind exactly the issue you're raising um, at, about how often do we really need to meet. Okay. Does yep. that work? And if I could if, if I could point out there there are sometimes less than every other week, depending on it, it basically follows the schedule from last year, which is not exactly every other week. It's there there are sometimes less. Okay. And um, thank you for putting that together, Athena. Michelle, does that uh, work yeah, for you? That's that's great. Thank you. Okay. So uh the motion that I'm looking for a second is to adopt the calendar with a starting time of 9.30, the annual calendar with a starting time of 9.30. Is I'll there a second? That. Okay. All right. A quick vote on that one. Uh, we'll start in this case with Lynn Griesmer. It's an aye. Mandy Johanneke. Aye. Michelle Miller. Aye. Jennifer Taub. Aye. Patty Angelos. Aye. Okay. Done with that item. Okay. Michelle, is there anything else you want to make sure we discuss, like, for example, would you like an update on where we are with the sewer and water bylaws? No, I'll just listen in until I have to leave, but I just, that's, okay. it's all good. Thank you. And we'll note um, the time you leave so that the record shows that. Um, so I think somebody said, Amy, go ahead. Thank okay. you. <laughs> and Anna. <laughs> Hi again. Um, I'm going to start at the beginning again. <laughs> um, yeah, so as you guys recall, we've got the water regulations, the sewer regulations, and then the bylaws that kind of allow us the ability to have these regulations. And so already we've discussed the water uh, bylaws, and that's gone through all the various processes. Um, sorry, the water regulations. <laughs> Even I get confused. I have to say these things out loud. Um, the sewer regulations were still still have to come through this group, but today we're just talking about the bylaws, which are pretty simple. They just kind of lay out the groundwork for who has the enforcement ability and kind of how we go about changing any of the regulations and that sort of thing. So we've got both the water and the sewer um, bylaws to discuss. Um, these already went through TSO. Um, there were a couple of questions that came up in TSO, and so we did get clarification from the lawyers on them. Um, and so one of them was just making sure that the way that we're laying out all of the fines, that that being in the regulations and the bylaws just referring to them being in the regulations, that that was acceptable. And so that was OK. Um, and then the second thing was um, the requirement to um, publish the regulations every time they're adjusted. Um, and that is. That is a requirement by state law on the sewer side, but not on the water side, although it's it's kind of best practice to at least put some sort of an announcement. Um, but unfortunately, what the lawyer said is uh, the way that the state law is written on the sewer side, you actually have to publish every single word of the sewer regulations. Um, and so that's the one place where you're going to see we made an edit just to the water one to say we're going to publish a notification that these regs are available because we have the flexibility to do that on the water side, but on the sewer side, our hands are tied and we do have to publish every single word of this 20 page document um, of the regulations, unfortunately. And so, let me just add an editorial to that. And that sure. is yesterday in discussing the town manager's budget where and the town council's budget, uh, the issue of what we have to publish and the cost is enormous. And um, we're even to the point that we're actually going out to bid for other quotes uh, from the Republican, I think it is, and the reminder, as well as the Gazette. So, um, Pat, you want to call on people? Anna, and then Mandy. 
this I apologize if I'm speaking out of turn. Lynn, is this something that we should be advocating for on a state level of saying we got to really kind of critically think about our our publishing requirements to find a balance between making sure the public is informed and being current with where people are actually finding information and being cognizant of budgets? Because it seems, I mean, I haven't seen those numbers that you're talking about, but I assume they are very high based on prior budgets and, and how much it costs. And so um, yeah, I, I guess not, this isn't about this topic specifically, but I'm, I'm curious if that's something that we should be maybe advocating for. Let's, let's uh, put that on our agenda with Joe and Mindy. Okay. Mandy. So I can actually answer that question. The MMA is advocating for it. And there well, are laws um, that are filed at the state legislature, particularly related to hearings. I will bring up the sewer publication thing too. It was mostly related to public hearings and the notice where notices for public hearings go. So that would be ZBA hearings, planning board hearings, all of our zoning bylaw change hearings. I'll make sure sewer regulations and regulation publishing is part of that ball. Um, you know, because so part of the problem is that in Eastern Massachusetts, a lot of the towns are having to publish in the globe because there is no other local paper at all. And the globe is massively expensive for some small towns that don't even have people who read the globe um at all so so it is it is certainly being considered the bill unfortunately went nowhere in the last session um but it has it is being refiled and for my policy committee it is one of the things we want to see changed but so that's an answer to that question there um <laughs> you, could you send me the bill number um i will look it up filed. thank you um let me make a note of that <laughs> And and we will mention it to Joe and Mindy as well. Yeah. Um, on, so I wanted to go back to thank you for the questions because I know a lot of those um, answers were because I sent on a questions related to this bylaw and don't see a lot of changes. But I want to go back to that section F. Yeah. Um, the water bylaw and the sewer bylaw language is the same. And the way I read, at least what's in our packet, it reads... Okay. The water bylaw reads, once adopted, such regulations and any amendments thereto shall be published once in a newspaper published in the town, if there be any, and not, and if not, then in a newspaper published in a county, and shall include a notice that said rules and regs shall be available. And so that reads to me that you have to publish the whole set of amendments. So I think we need to fix that language. Amy. <laughs> That that was fixed. Um, that must not. My version of it must not have. If you actually look at an email that um, that Athena sent you like thirty minutes ago, she sent you <laughs> my edited version. But I guess that must not be the one. All I did, um, and we can edit this as a group. All I did was added um, in section F on the water regs only. It says once adopted, and I added the words notification of. And then such regulations and any amendments shall be published in a newspaper of the town. So I just added the words notification of. Okay. Um, to the water. Sorry about that. Have the ability. It's okay. I. Is this that, the correct? That's why I'm trying to make sure that we had the the right one. But um, and I did it in track changes so that it would kind of stand out. But you'd have to go down to section F. Uh, which yeah, up a little bit. Right so, there. Right there. Notification okay. of. Okay. That's 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 the one change that we made from when we saw TSO. Okay, I'm gonna Mandy, are you finished uh, for the moment? Let Jennifer go. I have other yeah. comments and questions. Great. Jennifer? Yeah, no, I just <clears throat> had an overall question. Is what triggered the review of these bylaws that we wanted to change um individual homeowner, you know, responsibility for repairing a line? Or we, we, did we have to do this anyway? Pat, I can't raise my hand, but I'll be glad to oh. answer that. Yeah, that's good because I have no answer. Okay. Two things triggered this. One is um, a Elsie Fetterman, somebody in my district, uh, had a pipe break. And right. um, she was just astounded by how much it cost and felt that some of it was because of the poor risk condition of the roads that lead to the main. And right now, uh, the homeowner has to pay from the main, which is beyond their property line, to right. their house. The second thing is that what we learned in the process, and Amy would 
be able even better at this is we basically had practice in Amherst, but we really couldn't find the original bylaws. And so Amy, who is really the expert at DPW in uh, water and and sewer, um, have has, has developed finally developed bylaws. And so it was a need to put these bylaws on the books, um, as well as address this issue. But I'll, I'll just chime in to say to be to be clear too, the bylaws don't even get at that whole ownership question um, or a lot of those details. The bylaw just sets up the ability for us to have the regulations that do get into the weeds on, you know, the town's responsibility, the owner's responsibility, everything like that. So this is kind of the first step in making sure that we have these regulations that everyone knows what the expectations are of everyone when it comes to water and sewer. Um, and it kind of lays the groundwork for that. Thank you. Uh -huh. So then the next step would be addressing the Elsie Fetterman situation, which probably applies to a lot of people. Who Can, don't I know. Take that one? Can I take that, Lynn? Okay. Yeah, so, go ahead. Okay. So um, yes, and I think that that's going to be a really big discussion that we have at the council. Um, TSO and finance had slightly different recommendations coming out of each committee. We're trying to sort those out and figure out if, if there is one, because TSO came up with an idea that finance hadn't considered. And so, because we're a very imaginative committee. Um, and so we uh, we want to see if, if finance likes what TSO came up with and, and kind of before we bring that back. But that issue would be, if the council agrees to it, addressed in the regulations. Um, and But the council has to agree to it. It's not an insignificant change. And so that'll be a really big and important discussion that we have. Um, Sorry, I just had another one of those moments where I, I didn't think I would be talking about this in my life ever. But um, so, yes. And I think that one of the things that I really want to highlight is, is Amy brought this forward. I think Elsie's situation and those like it were, you know, were definitely uh, really good reasons. And Amy, I think to, I want to make sure Amy's getting full credit here for realizing that our water and sewer regs hadn't been done since I know before I was born. Um, and, and I'm 32. So, you know, that's, it's been a while. Um, and so I think that this was really a, we needed to update these regardless. And now is a good time to try to dive into that bigger issue. Um, but that's in the regs and the okay. bylaws. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. I appreciate that. Thank yeah. you, Anna. Mandy. So a GOL thing, which is always surprising. So do we want headings for each of these sections? Um, you know, if we put headings on, that means sections D and E and F might actually become a one, two, and three. Um, but do, do we want them or not? We tend to use he section headings, but we don't always use them, I don't think. So um, one question is, do we want to add that? And then I have a question about, I don't know whether this is technically, I, one of my comments is not technically um, GOL, but I'm gonna make it anyway. And the other one is potentially GOL. Section C, I guess it, it could be GOL, it's a clarity issue. When you read it, does this mean that the town council on its own can't propose to amend or adopt that it needs to have that proposal start with the manager? Um, it says we can, once the managers propose something, we can amend that proposal. But does does the way C is written, actually, you know, from time to time, the manager following consultation may propose the town council adopt or amend, right, adoption or amendment. The town council may adopt or amend and set forth. The way I read it, means that we can't, you know, I don't know whether it's clear enough that we can do it on our own and the town manager can do it or whether the order of the sentence implies that we can only start that process at the behest of the manager. Amy, did you want to respond? I, I was just going to say, I kind of thought section B is where we say, hey, the town council acting as the water commissioners has the right to change all these. And then part C is just saying, the town manager and DPW also have the ability to bring forth suggestions. But let me know if that's not how that reads. That's how okay. I thought it would read. Andy? Anna's thoughts. And then I'll go on to my next question. 
I agree with what Amy said. I also think that the way I read it is, is, you know, full first sentence, full stop, second sentence. I don't see them as conditional. Um, but I'm curious if it would make more sense to have it be broken out into another letter, like put a paragraph break after the first, not, not after B in C after the first sentence, would that clear, would that make it clear Mandy or was that redundant? Or what if we said like separately or something like that, just to maybe make it ultra clear. I mean, I wonder if in section B is authorized to promulgate and amend regulations and fee because section B doesn't talk about penalties. Right. That's where it, it's only in that sentence in section C. Um, so prom promulgate and amend regulations and set penalties for violations of such regulations to ensure and then we could potentially delete that sentence in C altogether maybe also adding an also um, the town manager may also propose to the town council adoption in section C so it's clear that it's both That makes sense. Then, yeah. So with what Lynn's doing, I think we could then delete maybe that whole sentence that she just highlighted. Amy, does that work for you? That's that's fine. I think that's certainly the intent. So I'm glad that this is adding some clarity of we all kind of have the ability to have these conversations and make updates. Um, and obviously we would want this same thing parallel in the water bylaws. Right. These are pretty parallel with the exception of the MGLs that we reference in them. Right, so those changes parallel. And so my next question was with D and E. Um, part of it goes to cost again, and part of it goes to, aren't they sort of saying the same thing? <laughs> the bulletin board is on the website, right? Um, and so if you have to publish it on the bulletin board, do you need another notice on the website? My next question is, do we have to hold a public hearing by state law? Um, because once you have public hearing, even though this one just says bulletin board, website, and social media, the implication is newspaper too, which adds cost when you're referencing a public hearing. Um, and so I, they seem duplicative, sort of, um, and I worry about the reference to a public hearing if not required by state law requiring us ultimately to publish something in a newspaper. Anna, should we? OK, so I, I guess I didn't inter. Obviously, I didn't interpret it the same way or I would have flagged it. But um, so I did not interpret it quite the same way in terms of the public hearing requirement. But I hear what you're saying, because just to make sure I'm understanding it, you're saying that anytime we do a public hearing, that kind of triggers all of the normal set of requirements for a public hearing. So if if it's not required by state law amy is it is this a state law requirement that we have a, a public hearing like could we just could we call it a public listening session and phraseology wise kind of get around that need i do think we need an, an formal opportunity for public input so i would just call it um must take public comment at a meeting specifically on this item or something on the regulations something like that okay I, I can chime in that I'm not aware of any, you know, specific requirement regarding a public hearing for water and sewer specifically. I, I'm sure that there are regulations for you guys as a community that if you're going to change a regulation or a bylaw that you have a process that you have to go through. And so, yeah, maybe this is um, duplicating something that you guys already have um, a formal process for. Amy, if I can ask a question, are are there notice and hearing requirements in the regulations? I don't think there are. Go look. No, because the, the regulations are like for the users and not on the process to do those regs. That's the bylaw. They refer back to the yeah. yeah. So, so Lynn's modifying something, but uh, um, it would be, you know, town council or their designee takes public comment or um, 
has a specific public comment period on the proposed amendments or something or prior to adoption. I, I don't know what the language is. You could call it a public forum. We've defined that in the charter. Um, right. That was sort of the way the charter commission hoped to get out of the publish publication requirements of a public hearing. Although we now know the issues we've had with public forums. Um, so you could also say just hold or their designee holds a public forum um, okay. for which notice is posted on the town bulletin board for no fewer than 14 days. You know, the notice requirement on the bulletin board, I think, is fine. It's just the yeah. use of the word hearing. Right. I would be more comfortable leaving it as is and, and just changing that one word to say public. I already forgot forum. Forum yeah. is what is, is, is the one that we use in the but charter. Lynn, Lynn, yeah. From a standpoint of scheduling, a public forum means we have to post it as a separate meeting, have a separate agenda, et cetera. Whereas if we just say at this meeting, we're going to do public comment at X time for this, I can go either way. I just wanna point out the fact that that requires a second meeting. Okay, but I, I, I think, oh, sorry. I want to make sure I'm fine either way. Just let's get the sentence right. I don't want to take out the part about notice posted on the bulletin board. I think that needs to stay in. So regardless of whether it's a public comment or a public forum, I think it needs to go on the website, which is the bulletin board. Yes. So, so it's the conducts a public hearing that you would modify to. Um, specific and, public comment. Yeah. Um, holds specific public comment uh, holds a specific public comment period for which notice is posted it, it's that phrase you're doing that's in the wrong spot lynn the must take specific public comment should go where conducts a public hearing is and everything else stays the same Yeah, the rest of the sentence mostly stays the same. Do you want to say for which notice is posted on the town bulletin board? Yeah. And then the no fewer than 14 days is fine. Um, so reject everything, but then subject matter of the public comment is what it would read. Sorry, keeps and subject matter. So, so reject all the changes after town bulletin board for now. To clean it back up to its original state. All of that? Yeah, reject the changes. And subject matter of the public comment. The last board hearing just changed to public comment. I'm going to guess in E, you need to change that word hearing in the first sentence. Well, to I guess my question is do we need E? Okay. Was was the sort of the the you can call it clarity or consistency. It seems repetitive. How are you going to take the website notice? Yeah. How are you going to take care of any special notice to businesses, et cetera? So the website and social media is not necessarily special notice, right? So you could Keep the provided, however, that nothing herein shall prevent the manager 
from providing additional notices. You, you could put that provided however sentence, tack it on to D and delete the rest of E, right? Just put a semicolon after public comment there and delete up E up to provided however and combine it with D. I'd like to also then add, um, I'll wait till you're done, sorry. Is that what you mean? Yeah. Anna? Can we also say when we go, if we're back up to the beginning of D, which notice is posted on the town bulletin board and social media and town social media, just because I think that that's where a lot of people start their engagement. Um, I'd like to push back on that a little bit. We don't use social media for any other sort of legal announcements and I'm not sure how we would do that. Um, okay, I was- It's, I was it's just sort of a, a different, this so would be very special mm -hmm. if we put, if we were required to put it on social media in, you know, as opposed to any other bylaw change or zoning regulation or zoning bylaw change. There's nothing in the charter about social media. I'm just worried about making a special thing that somebody has to remember to do yeah. when these things change and that we don't have a process for. I don't have control of social media for the town. And um, I'm just thinking about how that would work. Yeah, so I was just pulling it up from the former item E because it was in there. And so right, I know. Yeah. I, I think that I guess maybe it's not a bad idea to start a conversation about public hearing notices going out on, on social media in some capacity. Um, I think that might be helpful. This doesn't necessarily need to be the starting block for it, but um, I hear you in that if we're going to do it here, we need to figure out systems and structures for it to happen elsewhere. Was there anything, Athena, that you had flagged about that would make it have been, that would have made it different for where it was before? Can you? Yeah, so it's in the crossed out section. It says, at the same time as general notice of the hearing is posted under subsection D, the town council shall similarly notify business owners and residents by posting a copy of the public hearing notice on the town website and social media. What's your question about that? Is that different? Like, should we have taken it out if it had, if we had kept that in, would we have wanted to take, would, would you have pushed us to take it out there as well? Or is to it, take out social media? Yes. Yeah. Okay. And the bulletin board is on the website. So the bulletin board. Yeah, it is. There's a section on the website that we call bulletin board that we put all the things where something says it needs to be posted on the bulletin board. That's where we put it. I totally get that. I think I'm trying to think about the the ease of access than the typical entry points for folks and so maybe but i think it could be a different conversation about how we are maybe just posting about the bulletin board on our social media so i'm 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 okay with um taking that out but i will i'll figure out a, a different way to kind of work with communications on how to better promote the bulletin board's existence go ahead mandy i was going to say i think it's a comms issue with what goes on bulletin board and how that gets pushed through other channels of engagement. Yeah, totally. But Amy, Amy has her hand, hand up. up, I think. Yeah, well, I I don't know that it's, this is your guys meeting, I'm just here, but um, I, I mean, I almost wonder if like partly what you guys are saying is like our hands are tied by specifying where this gets notified and that's a town-wide Thing. So like right now we use the town bulletin board in the future, it might be social media. I almost wonder if you want to look at Amherst bulletin board and instead somehow kind of just say, you know, we align it with however we're doing notifications at the time. It's not an elegant way of saying it, but hopefully you guys understand <laughs> kind of what I'm saying is like that might evolve and I wouldn't want us to have something in here that isn't an, in alignment with what we might do in the future. A, a lot of those, I mean, the, the the charter references posting on the bulletin board. So if if we did make a change, it would it would need to be part of a charter change. And that would, you know, there's there would be a whole ripple effect. So that's, and that's part of the reason why it's like, you know, I, I think the bylaws should align with the charter in terms of what we're required to do, but there's nothing stopping us from going over and above that if we decide in the future that we want to make that known in more places, which I think is a good idea, but I'm just worried about making it a requirement. Mm. No, that makes a lot of sense. I, I appreciate it. Thank you. Anybody else on this? Any other questions for any other part of it? 
Oh, um, one, one thing back to section B, the set penalties. Um, the section C that we deleted said four violations of such regulations. So I would just add the four violations of such regulations to after penalties just to keep the language the same. Thanks. Anything else anywhere pertaining to these two bylaws? <laughs> So I, I can make a motion, this was the water one, right? Um, to declare the proposed water bylaw as uh, clear, consistent, and actionable as amended. Is there a second? Second. Second. <laughs> Triple, okay. Uh, so we'll go to the vote. And we'll start with uh, Haneke. Aye. Miller, uh, she's probably not here right now. Uh, Jennifer? Aye. Uh, Lynn? Aye. And I'm an aye. One step closer, Amy. <laughs> so, I mean, I would just request that whatever we just did with water be done for sewer. Except, were, sewer. except for the notification of in the new section E, I think it is. Yeah. With so do delivery. you want me to pull it up or not? It would be nice to get it done, I think. I, I was going to say, can we just make the motion to declare the sewer bylaw clear, consistent, and actionable as amended, and someone can make all of those amendments later if we are knowledge of what those amendments are? I'll be glad to do that, but I want, I'd really want Amy to check. Yeah, out. Lynn, if you want to try to yeah. adjust the sewer and then I'm happy to look it over and then. It. Okay. Great. Uh, so I second that motion. Okay. And so let's vote on that unless there's more discussion. Okay, starting. And just for the minutes, the clarity is the only amendment that showed in the water bylaw that won't show in this one is that one section notification of phrase. Okay. We'll start with Jennifer. Here. Aye. Uh, I'm an aye. Lynn? Aye. Mandy? Aye. Okay. And Michelle is absent. So it's for uh, yes, no opposed, and one absent. All right. We're done with that section. That thank you, Amy and Anna, but particularly Amy. Thank all you. Amy. All Amy. Yeah. Thank uh, you all. Um, thank I'd you. Like, I'd like to move on. Do we want to look at snow and ice, um, or I, there's one person in the audience, and I'm wondering if they have any questions or want to speak. So maybe we could call for a public comment period right now. So if if phone number one four three eight three. Oh, don't read the whole thing. Just the last four digits, please. Four seven zero one. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. Um, if they would like to speak, would you raise your hand or let Athena know? Okay. Um, we're Oops. gonna. No, Pat. They raised their hand. Oh, okay. Um, Athena, can you bring them in or? Hello, you're going to have, if you state your name and uh, where you live, you have up to three minutes to share with us. Um, hi, Gio. So this is Tracy Zafian. I was just calling in on the Stone Ice bylaw. Um, I don't know if you are going to talk about it today or not. Um, but I guess, you know, I had seen in the packet the letter from the town manager indicating that according to staff that the bylaw is fine as is and I do agree that the you know the letter of the bylaw seems pretty straightforward I just as I had raised before and as I raised in emails when it was first being considered 
I just had questions related to the enforcement. Um, and I just, it's not really clear, like, how it's enforced or the extent to which it's enforced, the extent to which fines are collected, the extent to which there's follow up with property owners who don't clear their sidewalks. Um, so I know in the past GOL discussions on this, there's been some consideration that the DPW could perhaps help with enforcement. And at one of the meetings, DPW Superintendent Guilford Morin offered that the DPW could do that. Um, I guess I would urge the GOL to consider that change, um, especially because uh, because the um, DPW are the ones who are out clearing the sidewalks, you know, mm -hmm. as a courtesy anyway. And uh, and I've been in touch with uh, Mr. Mooring recently about um, there was like a sidewalk that got damaged by one of the sidewalk plows, and he was immediately out fixing that. So they're pretty aware of what's happening with the sidewalks, more so perhaps than the police department. Um, thank you. Thank you very much, Tracy, for your sharing. Okay, I'm going to end public uh, comment at this point. And do we want to look at the sewer, uh, snow and ice bylaws? I'm sorry. Lynn? I can raise my hand now, sorry. Um, I wasn't part of the full discussion um, at GOL on this, um, but I really can't remember, but the following issue comes up for me. Wherever we plow, we're liable. And so if we extended plowing and then we didn't do it properly, then I think we assume liability. And so I really support um, the town sticking with its own property because at least at that point, we haven't taken on more liability. Mm -hmm. I could be wrong about the liability, but I'm concerned about it. Good point, Mandy. Um, so a couple of things. Um, and, and this has been, uh, this is a, a comment related to a couple of things. Uh, right now, the enforcement is only in non-criminal is only by police officers. So I think we should put um, DPW um, into that somehow. And I think we should put inspectional services into that. And um, I would actually think about, you know, in looking at a broader thing, and this is where public nuisance comes into play, um, that CRC started looking at the public nuisance bylaw, and in doing that look, um, looking for obstructions on sidewalks and all, the only thing we have is snow and ice bylaw, really, except out of, I assume, code or something, right? And um, it specifically talks about snow and ice removal of snow and ice from sidewalks. You know, the title is snow and ice. I can put the bylaw up. Um, and then depositing snow on public ways. No person shall deposit snow or ice on any way, sidewalk or public parking place. And so it's really specific to just snow and ice instead of a more general obstruction of sidewalks. Um, and so I'm curious whether, you know, beyond adding inspectional services, so inspectional services can't write for an obstruction of a sidewalk based on this bylaw unless the obstruction is snow or ice. Mm. You know, if it's a tree hanging across it that no one cleared up, or frankly, what's more problematic in our neighborhood, bushes overrunning the sidewalk where you can't actually use the sidewalk because the property owner has not trimmed the side of the bushes, say. Um, you can't write a ticket for that under this bylaw. And so it it should we be thinking more broadly about sidewalk and public way obstruction mm -hmm. versus just snow and ice removal and then thinking about adding in inspectional services to that so that they can write a ticket under this bylaw for that obstruction. Um, or, and, and then DPW, because they're the ones that clear the snow and ice. So if they're going to be the one going out, that's who I call. I don't think to call the cops, right? Um, and so I think if we add more enforcers, we might actually be able to enforce the bylaw a little bit better. And if we make it more broad. Good points, Mandy. Lynn? Um, adding to that issue of bushes and so forth is also sign of a line of sight when you are trying to make a turn in an automobile 
And at what point does somebody not trim off their bushes and their trees, obstructing the line of sight for safety? Could also a good point. Anna? Hi, I apologize. I, I probably should have raised my hand during public comment. Um, and so I will, uh, I will make this as a comment and not as a discussion necessarily. Um, I would really love to see this removed from police enforcement. I do not think this is something our police officers need to be responding to. Um, and I think that uh, the it makes sense to have it be inspection services and DPW. However, I also then question um, capacity and making sure that this would be not adding undue capacity in either of those departments. But I feel very strongly that this should not be something that people are calling the police to respond to. Thank you, Anna. Jennifer. Oh. I agree with Anna. That's just what I was going to say. Or calling press. This isn't what press should be. Seems like it's. And, and I'm, out. I'm sorry. Oh, Mandy. Okay, Lynn. Could it be something that is um, combined with our existing traffic, our traffic um, officers? I mean, I, I don't want to add staff. So instead of police officers, the traffic enforcement officers, I think mm -hmm. we reference them some other places instead of, I mean, they are technically police officers, I think. I'm not sure, but. They have but certain powers. They have certain powers, yeah. Um, I'm happy to try and propose some sort of amendment that would expand it and, and do those changes if people would like so that we could see some actual changes. I think that'd be great. I do too. Uh, it's not going to happen this meeting. Yeah, no, I understand that. Yeah. So I guess we're asking you to go away and do your work, kid, and come back uh, at our next meeting with this. Does that feel comfortable to people? And I'm going to suggest then if you have additional things that you think might need to be added to get those to Mandy directly and not to anybody else in the committee. So with that, are we ready to move on from snow and ice right now? I think so. Okay, then I'm going to suggest we, um, I'm going to make a motion to adopt the December 14th, 2022 and the January 4th, 2023 minutes. Um, are there, is there a second? A second. Okay. And my comment is, I just want to thank whoever wrote, I think it was this, the really long minutes. They were amazing. I don't know how that person did it. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're really grateful. Um, and so we'll vote on that, starting with uh, myself. Yeah, I'm an I. Lynn? Abstain. I wasn't part of the committee. Okay. Uh, Mandy Jo? Um, I. Uh, Michelle's absent and Jennifer. Aye. All right, the motion passes uh, three in favor, one absent and one abstention. And let me see, we've had public comment and thank you, Tracy, because you brought up some clearly important things for us to think about. Um, I think, uh, are there any announcements or I know we've gotten, uh, well, any announcements? Okay. And uh, there are no unanticipated items. The Tibetan proclamation has come up, but that will be at our next meeting. Uh, Mandy? That, that was going to be my question. Are there any other proclamations? We should look at the list to make sure we're on top of the, the I guess, the March proclamations at this point. Um, yeah, and there's an early April one, and I just want to ask if I've referred it because I've lost track. Um, and that's the one for Child Abuse Awareness Week. I don't think that's come out yet. Okay, I will refer that then. So both of those can be on the next agenda. And uh, who who has that list of proclamations? I, uh, it, I basically- It's a SharePoint packet. Let me pull it up. Yeah. 
Yeah. yeah. If you. I can pull it up quickly, hold on. Good idea. Yeah, I'd just be curious because I that's something I obviously need to have. Uh, I don't know how up to date it is. Um, yeah, I know Jennifer used to Moisten used to do that for us, and we do have the Black History Month tonight. So I don't know how up to date it's been, but Black History Month, Chinese New Year was March is Tibetan Day, April. Right. We've done Arbor Month in the past, the Child Abuse Awareness and Prevention Month, and Jewish American Heritage Month. Um, Jennifer, I think that was something we thought about adding, the Jewish American Heritage Month in April. Uh, yeah, didn't that's what Dorothy sponsored last year. Did we have one last year? So yeah, we'll have we to did. find that one. Okay, so that, that one would be April too. Who sponsored, oh, Arbor Month? We public haven't done that tree. one in a while, um, okay. so it would be a request to shade public shade tree if they're doing anything okay. and want a proclamation. Okay, I think in March we should have my birthday up there. <laughs> the last Arbor Month one is probably 2021, so we might not have done it last year, although these haven't been updated. So... Okay, so I need to send you the child abuse awareness, and uh, I will also send Dorothy the Jewish. Thank you, Lynn. Um, heritage. Heritage, and see if she wants to do it again. Amanda, your hand is still up, oh, or is it up to the? That's residual. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> I'm if we're all settled, I think we can adjourn the meeting. Jennifer's got her hand up. Oh, sorry, Jennifer. No, just quickly. I just wanted to um I think she's not here, but thank Michelle very much for her service as chair last year. Yes. And um also Pat, thank you. If this is how you chair when post surgery, you're <laughs> you're gonna do great. <laughs> <laughs> it's an act second to both of those comments jennifer yes, thank you thank you yeah michelle's done some really good work um i i i just want to say i was on i've been on gol since the council started and it's been uh an incredible committee in many ways and used to be an incredible amount of fun and uh i think it's gotten lost in the weeds like many things but I really appreciate this particular group of people and the energy and, and humor that you bring and the willingness to say what you're thinking. And I want to thank Athena uh, for all her hard work. And Kelly, I believe, is taking minutes today. Is that accurate? And if that's true, thank you, Kelly. And with that, I'm going to do what I guess, Ms. I, I have a question. Do we have to do an annual uh, rules of procedure review? Oh, yeah, I think we do. I think we're supposed to. Yeah, so that should come up on the next agenda. Okay. I, I think one of the best ways to start that is to poll the whole council and ask for a response to you, Pat, or to Jennifer, one of the vice chairs, and say, what rules do you want reviewed and what changes would you make to them? So not just, you know, get a list of, I want these three, but have the counselors say, and here's my suggested change too. And Pat, when do you, I'll do the polling, but when would you like those by? Uh, well, we have it on the agenda for the 15th. So yeah. I'd like to see it. Well, it has to be in mon by Monday at nine. It wouldn't um, be great if we could Monday the uh, 11th, 12th. That's, Why don't we make it Friday? That'd be great. Friday the uh, 9th. Okay. 10. Ten. Yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah, see, I can't do simple focus things. Okay, and I'll have um, them send to Pat and Athena. Yeah, that, that would be great. Okay. And I appreciate that. Lynn, so you'll poll the whole council? Yep. I suggest Thanks. mentioning it during the GOL report on the 6th. Yes. Okay. Yeah, and, and then it's just a compiled document in rule number order. Here's the rules people wanted us to look at and the changes. Right. Right. Okay. And then finally, I want to just thank Pat and Jennifer for stepping up for leadership for the uh, GOL. 
Yeah. It's kind of, I'm glad to be back. I was on GL oh. for one year and it was actually one of the best ways for me to know what was coming to the council when. Yeah. So. And I want to thank Jennifer. I mean, I feel like we have the possibility of collaborating as liaisons on the housing trust. And this yeah. is just one more way, which I'm glad. That too. Yeah. yeah. I agree. All right. With that, right. with my new power, I adjourn. In an hour, Pat. In an hour. Don't let it go to your head. Yeah. <laughs> Get out of here. Go away. Adjourn. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye. Thanks. <laughs> Athena, thank you. I'll see you in a while. I can't hear you. I'll swing by in a little while. Okay. Thank you. Bye-bye.